So I'm down in the basement and I'm getting ready to refinish this. Uh, it was my very first little dinette. My parents bought Darren and I this for our wedding. It was our wedding gift, one of them. And um, this is the top of the table. And there's the side of it. So the white parts, the white parts are gonna be painted I'm thinking about doing it in this shade of red by Valspar. Um, Hydrochroma, that's not the name of the color. At any rate, I'm painting it that. And I also have a glaze by Valspar that I got a while back. It's a mixing glaze. Thinking about adding a little bit of the blue that's um, on the wall in that room just to try and tie that color in a little bit. I'm going to use that as an accent when I distress and I'll go over the distressing steps. But ultimately, between refinishing furniture, bags, couches, anything that stands still, I'll either paint it or I'll refinish it. That's what I love to do. So stay tuned. Okay, when I'm making my chalk paint I use calcium carbonate and I get that from Amazon I think I bought that several years ago for $15 and I think it was a five pound bag you can see where I got it from and then I just use the Valspar use doing it in a shade of red and there is the calcium carbonate it's a one-fourth of a cup I'm gonna mix um, enough water in it to make it appear to look like pancake batter. Okay, so I just mixed the paint and I'm applying the um, the next color, which is, it looks bluer now that it's not in the, the jar, but I'm just going across it. This is actually a paintbrush. I bought this on Amazon. I did not get this through any Sloan. This was just a paintbrush. And I think I paid five or six dollars for this. So. You know, it's not, I've had an Annie Sloan brush and they are definitely a better quality. The bristles on these can shed, but um, it's worth it. I don't care. I just pick the bristle off when it happens. But that's basically how I'm applying it. And I will do two or three coats. Um, I did go through and buffed it first with a Scotch Guard sponge and just literally just took off this surface dust or that just that feeling of um, paint. It doesn't feel like paint, it's just a smoother surface now. So I ended up switching the brush over to um, again, where's my, where's my camera thing here, I'm sorry. Um, shit. That's the brush. It's Again, got it at Lowe's and I switched the brush over because I was trying to get into the crevices. And I will say this, I do um, use the Purdy brushes and the Hawk brushes by, here's the other piece, sorry, I'm gonna make you sick. Um, I get them the higher grade, the better quality brushes, the bristles. Um, I find that it gets a better coverage with the paint so I like this brush because it really has helped eliminate the brush marks on the on the paint. Um, I like to call it frosting the cake because this is not your typical way of painting like a trim work. I'm I'm really gobbing it on. I'm just trying to make sure I don't have any drips, but with the calcium carbonate in the paint, I find that you can get away with doing this. It's watered down a little bit also when you mix that calcium carbonate with water. It's typically, um, I would say two thirds calcium carbonate to, wait a minute, let me rephrase this. I would say a half a cup of calcium carbonate to maybe a fourth of a cup of um, water. Start there. I always say to try and make it look like pancake batter. I really apply that more so with uh, Plaster of Paris. With calcium carbonate, it's a little more watered down and that's fine. If you cannot find calcium carbonate, just go get a big box of, or a big can of um, white Tums. 
and put them in a coffee grinder and grind them up and that's that's calcium carbonate this is the top of the table before I painted it so I've started distressing the tabletop and I typically will go in with an 80 put some marks in you can see the marks then I drop I go up in um, grit so 220 320, 400, and right now I'm at the 320, 400 mark, so it looks a little bit rough. And then I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. This is the side done, this is the side undone. So I did a light blue coat over the top of the red because I kind of want that to shine through. I'm just gonna show you a little bit of what I'm doing. I really wanna kind of start blurring this slightly. So I'm at a 320 right now. And once you see that line start to look more like a smudge, that's when I stop. So it's a little bit more smudgy. Now I'm going to go in with a 400 and I'm going to blur it out a little bit more. And I may even go back and forth. It's just not really going to mark the paint. It's just going to see how that blurs it up. That's what I'm looking for. I want to see that red come through. Okay, this is um, probably a clearer view of what I'm talking about with the red shining through. Um, it looks distressed. Now, these marks were all put on this table by my children when they were really little. So um, they actually mean something to me. I typically, if uh, somebody were paying for me to do a table unless they asked for that to show, I would probably remove that. I would either fill it with wood filler and um, sand it down or um, yeah, that's basically what I would do. But in this case, I wanna keep it. It tells a story. Go in aggressive like I did with the table. I'll show you that real quick. That is half finished and it looks really scary right now, but um, I have a vision for it. So I will start back on this and then I'll show you what I'm doing in a few minutes. Yes, it's the dead of winter and I am wearing a tank top because it is so hot and sanding is taking forever. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna go crazy on this piece. I just wanna get it, um, I don't know. I just wanted to tell a story. Like I'm not for 1993 story. The fire comes in um, this is looking a little too um, USA for me right now, so I will be glazing over it. I just wiped it down. The trunk of the table is not uh, the main show. It's going to be the tabletop, so I know you're looking at this thinking it's really ugly, but just keep watching. Okay, so I'm gonna be using the Valspar Clear Mixing Glaze. You can take any color and you do four to eight parts of clear glaze to one part paint. So I'm gonna try this right now and let's see how it goes. Ooh, I'm not gonna lie, it's looking kind of scary. I don't know if you can even see that, but let me start wiping and see what happens. Okay, here's what I like about this. You can really work with it, but you've got to work fast, I think. So I'm going to work a little bit and then I'll talk a little bit, but I can't do both. I'm sorry, I'm not that talented. Oh, shit. Okay, I think this is worth um, showing you so you can see what I'm doing exactly. I'm painting it on. I've got a damp cloth right here. Oopsies, there it is. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from behind it and just apply a little bit of pressure and start wiping off. So you're really putting on and wiping it off at the same time. If you don't, you're gonna have um, a bit of a mess. And then I'm kind of just rubbing it in, buffing it in. I almost want it to look like a brushed metal, kind of. My arm's too close, sorry. Um, but this truly, I think, makes, it's making it look better. It just, it didn't look finished. And anything I do, I feel like the more, I don't know where my, oh, there it is. I feel like the more um, layers of things I do, the better the product looks. 
I want it to look, I want it to look like it's been professionally finished. So, and I do professionally finish furniture, but these are things that you can do. This is not a hard thing to do. Now, I will be honest with you. I don't know if Valspar still makes their glaze. This is probably older than my, my youngest, who's 18. I don't know. I've had this for quite a while. Um, but it works really good. It's actually making the blue almost look like a slate blue now. It's, it's really kind of neat. I'm liking it. So I'm going to keep going. And then I should, you know, actually, let me just do one more spot for you. to be um, a drying retardant. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, it retards the growth. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. It retards the drying time of the paint. So you can work with it. Look at how cool that looks. I hope you can really see this because this is really making it look so much better. I kind of want it to look like it's something from Ethan Allen. Don't laugh. Um, and I believe that we all can do things like that. I, I do not believe that you have a creative or you're born with a creative bone in your body or you're not. I think it's something you can learn. You can learn anything. So I'm a hairdresser. I've learned a lot from my clients. I did not go to college, but I felt like I got a great free education from them. So thankful for that. Okay. I'm going to stop because I'm getting sticky. Okay, I am done glazing this face. Now I'm going to go on to the table top. Okay, this is what I'm using to coat it. Normally I use a wax, paste wax, but this uh, piece, I think it's going to get a lot of wear and tear, and to be honest with you, um, I'll show you my dining room table upstairs, but this piece, I really feel like I need to do a polyacrylic. I've used this before. It works great and it holds up well. It's a real creamy um, consistency. It almost looks like watered down Elmer's glue. And I'm just going to put the brush in a little bit and I'm just gonna brush it on. Don't mind my clean laundry behind me. It's actually laundry day in between drying coats I do my laundry. Base is done and the tabletop is done. Um, I'm happy with the way it came out. 